All right, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do the transmission drain and refill on a 2017 Toyota Corolla 1.8 LE. Um, should be a very simple process. You are gonna to need to use um, a few tools, nothing too crazy. This will save you a couple hundred dollars. Um, before draining, make sure you get a new drain plug gasket because that is a one-time use gasket. So make sure you are fully aware of that. Um, you can get the gaskets at Amazon. You can get it a sorted set, so they're pretty cheap online. If not, you can get them for like two dollars or three dollars at Am um, at the actual dealership. So, um, before we get everything started, if you haven't already, give it a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions, and hit that subscribe button for more coming videos in the future. And we're gonna go ahead and start this video right after the intro. <laughs> All right, so customer complaint. Um, when driving, she's kind of feeling a little here and there shuddering. So dealership wanted to sell her a timing chain job. We went ahead, brought it over here, and I was like, well, why would there be a timing chain job for the engine side? So I don't know why that's being said on that. Um, the car has, I think, around like 60 or 70,000 miles. So it has about 69 to 88 miles. Um, you can see right there. So the symptom that she was explaining to me, I would recommend a transmission drain and fill and then we can actually go from there to see. Cause she's owned it since day one and has never serviced it from what she has told me. All right, um, let's go ahead and lift up the car and then I will be showing you jack up procedures on that. And the car has to be leveled when doing this type of procedure. All right, so fortunate for me, we don't have a splash shield, so it's actually gonna be a lot more easier um, if there was a splash shield. So I think there should have been one covering the actual oil pan. If not, it'll probably be a portion of it, just kind of how something like this is. Um, so this one's missing. I don't know why. Um, all right, so jacking up points. You can lift it up right here from the front. You'd be lifting up both front wheels, but before doing that, make sure that the rear is fully secured um, before you lift up the rear. So lift up the rear. I would recommend to lift both wheels up at first and then um, don't lift it up at the actual pinch welds because you will destroy them over time. They're actually meant for a lift. Now, if you do lift them up from here, you will destroy the the pinch welds on that, but you can if your jack can't fit under there. Now, you can lift it up from here, but I would recommend to lift it up at the actual bolt because it's actually more um, strengthened at that area. Same thing applies to the passenger side, it's vice versa. Now, coming up to the rear, um, you will be jacking it up from um, the actual cross beam in the rear. And then you could be using your jack stands to be supported right here um, on the actual pinch welds. And you can also put your jack stands on the actual pinch welds too as well. Um, it'll be fine once you're laying it down. All right, so now that's done. Um, we have the car leveled out. It doesn't need to be 100% perfect, but you do need to have it within a couple degrees. So what you can do is you can actually get one of these little level gauge and then you can actually see Let's see if we can get a better idea. So if it's kind of like that, that should be ideal. So it doesn't need to be crazy perfect, but it just needs to be in that sense of area. All right, so before we drain out the fluid, what I always like to do is I like to measure it to see how much is coming out. Now, obviously we do not have any leaks inside the system. So if you don't have a scan tool, what you can do is you can do the measuring technique so you see what comes out and then you'll put back what goes back in now if you have a leak then obviously this won't apply to you so just keep in mind where that's the the method i'm going to be doing i can show you how to do the temperature and i will give you the procedure for the temperature but this actually works out pretty well all right so we're going to be using a six millimeter allen there's a little allen setup so let's go ahead and get this off lefty lucy God, that thing's on there. So, all right, so we're gonna start draining. I have my catch container. Now the fluid is a little bit dirty. So we're gonna go ahead and let this drain in the meantime, and then we'll go ahead and get back to the video. All right, so now that we got that drained out, we're gonna go ahead and add our drain plug. 
Don't forget to replace your gasket and I will give you the torque spec on that. So once you're done doing that, go ahead and spray some brake cleaner on your rag and then wipe down your area with the rag. This will keep you from wasting a whole bunch of brake fluid. I meant brake cleaner. All right, cool, we got that down. Now, the fluid that came out wasn't really that much. Let's see how much came out. Literally, literally about a quart, huh? I think it should have been about a quart and a half to two quarts that should have came out. So let's go ahead and check out to see the drain and refill procedure. I'm gonna see how much fluid is supposed to go in and come out during that process. All right, so next I'm gonna go ahead and take off the wheel. We are gonna be using a 21 millimeter. So we're gonna be taking off one, two 10 millimeter bolts and then we have a little fastener clip that's right here. You can use a pick just to wedge in between that. So for this one, you're gonna go ahead and just get a flathead screwdriver or you can get your pick and then you'll just kind of wedge around and you'll just work your way. So for the little clip right here, I'm just gonna kinda hang it down below, just like that. And then we have our, it looks like a 24 millimeter. So we have our 24 millimeter fill plug. All right, so that is a 24 millimeter. So let's go ahead and remove that. It shouldn't be on there that tight. But once the fluid stops like pretty much almost draining out, now we have a fill plug. So you're gonna use the same six millimeter Allen wrench so we're just gonna back this up as much as possible. And then we should start seeing fluid leak right out. So this is the fill tube that we're taking out. Now just keep your actual, all right, there we have it. So this is the little plastic tube that we got. Let's go ahead and clean this up. Now, these don't need to be tightened that much. So you can see it. This is where you put your Allen. So yeah. So we'll go ahead and get back to the video once it's done draining. All right, so once it gets to this little trickling effect, we're gonna go ahead and just, you can either just wait until it it drains right out or we can go ahead and put back on the, the the tool itself. Now this, you don't need to torque it down. All you need to make sure is that it's all the way snugged up. So let me clean my area as we're tightening this down because my hands are a little greasy and slippery. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down we're gonna keep going until it stops. Once it stops, I just back it up half a turn and then that's it. They torque this fill tube to 15 inch pounds. So, I mean, I'll just say do it by hand and then you should be fine. As long as you can back it out by hand, you'll be golden on that. All right, so now that we got that in, let's go ahead and put on our drain plug. We're just going to tighten this down as needed. And we'll, we're not going to worry about this because we got to still check it out. So we're not going to finish tightening that. So I'm just going to clean up my area for the time being. So for the drain and refill that we did, um, we got about two quarts. And I think that's pretty ideal for a drain and refill. So we are set on that. Now, let's just say if you had a leak. One way you can actually do this... Um, before anything is that you can actually keep this off and then we would fill it up at the fill tube but you would keep this off until fluid starts leaking once it starts dripping not pouring once it becomes into like a drip 
then you would basically close this off and then um, go ahead and start the vehicle from that um, point we would let the car warm up now you do need a scan tool to do this um, if you had a leak just want to make sure you're you're fully aware of that now if you didn't have a leak you don't need the scan tool just want to make sure you're fully aware of that all right so the transmission fluid that we're going to be using um, I'm using the Valvoline Max Life full synthetic. Um, it's going to say Dextron 6, Mercron V, and LV Dexmerc CVT. Now, when coming over here, this one, the transmission fluid that we actually need, it needs to be Toyota or Lexus CVT F. FE. That's the fluid that we actually need for this model. So this is compatible with that. So in that sense, just go ahead and shake it because whatever little additive that it has, got to make sure it's all shook around. All right. So we're going to take about two quarts from this. Measuring right here is going to be one quart to three. So we just need to get it down to the two quarts. I don't know if you guys can see that. So once we get it down right here, the left side is liters and the right side is quarts. We're measuring quarts. Now to fill up the transmission, I'm gonna be using a Mighty Vac. I got this on Amazon. Um, it's about 1.5 liter extraction. So this is actually perfect. So I'll probably maybe one and a half times I gotta fill this up. Or yeah, just extract it and then fill back the car up with that. Now if you didn't have that, they do have a mini version. Um, you can buy this one at AutoZone. I believe it's by CTA. Now these are about like $20, $30. That one is not even that much different. So the only thing is you just have to do this a couple more times in that sense. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fill up our area. So when pushing in the fluid, you need to make sure that you pump it in slow because if not, it will shoot out. All right, so last and final one, we are gonna be adding this, and then we are pretty much done on that sense. All right, so we're gonna go back and put on our fill plug. So we're just gonna just, just put it on just like that, just for the time being, hand tightened. So we gotta go ahead and check out our fluid. Um, level so now we're going to be checking out the temperature now the temperature is going to be in the um, actual transmission we're not looking for engine coolant temperature so i do not care about that so i'm gonna go ahead and let this load all or never mind let's go ahead and corolla and i will basically god dang i just want All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pick, let's see, without smart key, radar cruise. All right, so now we're gonna to go to system select, and then we're gonna to go to powertrain, and then we're gonna do engine and ECT. Let's see. Now I gotta pick out some data. The ones I only care about is the transmission. So we're gonna do read data stream. All right, so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for transmission. Uh, so we're gonna see AT oil temperature one. That's the one I care about is the AT temperature um, one. Make sure there's any other ones, no. All right, so that's the only one I really cared about. So we're gonna go do okay. Right now we're at 69 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and start the vehicle. All right, so start it. You're gonna let the car idle for about a few minutes. Once you're done doing that, or I'm sorry, for a few seconds, once you're done doing that, we're gonna go ahead and put the car into a gear while holding the brake and making sure, making sure that the wheel doesn't move. And the car still needs to be up in the air in the meantime. So we're gonna go into reverse, let it idle for about five seconds. Revert, I'm in neutral, idle for about five seconds. 
and then drive and we'll let that idle for about five seconds and now while going back into each gear we're gonna do the same procedure so we're back in neutral let it idle till five seconds and then same thing with reverse let it idle about five seconds all right so now that we let those gears idled um, now we're pretty much what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are gonna wait for a certain temperature um, the temperature that we're looking at is anywhere from 90 degrees 95 degrees Fahrenheit to 113 degrees Fahrenheit that's when we can check out the fluid and the car has to be running during this time so the fluid is at 97.25 so anywhere from 95 to 113 is what we need to check it at so we are good to go all right so let's come on and check out the fluid so again while checking it out make sure you have something to catch it under all right so let's go ahead and loosen this up some fluid should leak out but it shouldn't be a lot so just like that so once it starts to trickle and i say that's pretty ideal i did add a little bit extra than what i should add sorry so once the stream kind of gets like that, I would say we'd be pretty much ideal. I know that's about like two quarts right there. I don't want to pull out any more than what I don't want to. All right, so let's go ahead and tighten this down. I will get you the torque specs for that. And then just don't forget to clean up your area. Now, spray a little bit of brake cleaner right around the bolt and just keep an eye on it just to make sure no fluid is coming out from the drain plug. If it starts leaking, then you obviously you need to replace the drain plug, gasket. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and tighten up the fill plug, and then we're gonna go ahead and put on our little plastic shield. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put on our clip. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten down our tens. All right, so the drain plug is gonna to be torqued down to 30 foot-pounds, and then the fill plug is gonna be torqued down to 36 foot-pounds, so keep that in mind. For the wheel nut, the lug nuts, you're gonna be torquing down that to 76 foot-pounds, and when you put on the wheel, you're gonna be torquing it down in a star pattern. So you're gonna go one, two, three, four, and five, and that's pretty much it. Uh, make sure you snug them down, because you, you do got top hats. So try to snug down the bottom and make sure that this, um, the lug nut actually seats onto the rim. Because if not, you can actually tighten it down while it's like that and it's not all the way seated. And then you'll have an issue. And as you're driving, it'll go ahead and send her out and then your lug nuts will be loose again. So make sure that it's fully seated in in the actual rim. This video helped you out. Give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions. And hit that subscribe button for more coming videos in the future. And thanks for watching.